Hey everyone. Uh, I know I've been making quite a few more serious videos ever since the patch came out, but I've had a lot on my mind about the balance and a few of the changes they made, and now I feel it didn't really help much. So I have a few ideas, and I've had a couple of these for a long time now that I feel would help balance the game and make it feel just overall better. I'm not going to go into character specific changes because that would take absolutely forever. I'm just going to go over a few general changes that I think would overall improve the experience for most players. So for this first change, I brought in Akuma because he'll be the easiest character to help explain my point. The first change I'd like to see is a pretty big change to crush counters. I'm sure you all know what they are. But there are three different types of crush counters that each have their uses, and as you know, some characters have very strong crush counters, where other characters don't. But what I mean by the three different types of crush counters is why I picked Akuma here. Now, Akuma has, of course, three different crush counters, all of which just so happen to be the three different types. So the first is his standing hard kick. Let me turn on counter hit so it's actually a crush counter. Uh, his standing hard kick leads to the most amount of damage. You know, if I played Akuma, I'd do the combo. So, yeah, he can get the most amount of damage off of that, but it's the most situational, as if Ryu were to crouch, which will happen a lot in most matches, this will just fly right over his head. Ryu's standing hard kick is exactly the same. It's his most damaging, but it's the most situational. You're not going to land it a whole lot unless it's in a very specific situation. Now, the next type of crush counter would be the lower damaging crush counter. This would be Akuma's standing hard punch. He doesn't get many follow-ups after this. In fact, unless his opponent is in the corner or he has V-Trigger, he doesn't get any follow-ups aside from the actual target combo. Again, Ryu's ex is exactly the same in this way. These crush counters are usually very good, but they don't lead to a whole lot. So I feel like that always kind of made them pretty fair. But then there's the third type of crush counter, which is just the really good crush counter, which would be Akuma's crouching heart punch. It doesn't matter if your opponent is standing or crouching, this is going to absolutely destroy them. And he gets, of course, good conversions off of it. Still a decent amount of damage. He gets corner carry. It is plus three, so he can do another button after it. It's just... It's a really good move. And this is where I'd like to see a change. These really powerful crush counters don't really make the neutral too in-depth for characters with them. I mean, you know, with uh, Yurian, you'll see him use his standing hard punch a lot because he has no reason not to. It covers a bunch of distance, he has good conversions off of it because it's a crush counter, it's safe, he can also cancel off of it. I mean, there's just no reason to use any other button when you have that super good one. And so... Capcom did nerf crush counters in the sense that all of them now do uh, increased scaling, which leads to decreased damage. I feel like this was kind of unfair to just give this to every single character, because again, there are some crush counters that are significantly better than others. As I said in my Ryu video, Ryu standing hard punch now kind of sucks, because every time you land it as a crush counter, it will do significantly less damage than if you didn't land it as a crush counter, and he never got any new combos, really, with his crush counter, so it kind of just nerfed the damage you're going to get with it, because 90% of the time when you land that, it's going to be a crush counter. So I feel like just giving every single crush counter this increased scaling was kind of unfair. I feel like the only ones that should have received this scaling would be to these really powerful ones that just work all the time. And another change I'd like to see is to make these unsafe. That's kind of where the big change comes in. Because again, there are characters, uh, also Balrog, unless he was changed and I don't know about it, uh, he's a pretty good example. They'll just throw out their crush counters all the time because they have no reason not to. And 
I feel like making them unsafe would be a good fix to this. It would not only encourage more defense from players because you'd actually get rewarded for blocking it, but it would encourage more variety in what moves you use because, you know, it'd be unsafe so you can't use it all the time. And it would lead to different play styles in the sense that some people probably wouldn't use them a whole lot because they'd like to play it safe. And then other people would like to use them a bit more frequently because they want to get that high amount of damage. Now, you know, I'm not a professional balancer. I'm not really sure what this would do, but I feel like this would be a good nerf to quite a few of the crush counters. And another nerf would be to make them all minus. I don't think there really should be a plus crush counter. I always liked reuse and how they were designed because they're both minus one, so his turn is done. I feel like that's a great way to go about it because you can get massive damage off of crush counters. Even still, you can get a high amount of damage. But I just liked how reuse, it was kind of a risk to use it because you wouldn't be able to pressure your opponent anymore compared to his standing medium punch, which while did significantly less damage compared to a crush counter, it gave you more pressure. So I feel like making the crush counters weaker, not just in the damage that they do, I feel like that was the complete wrong way to do it, but in the situationalness or the effectiveness in the neutral would make it a much better experience because like, Akuma's Crashing Hard Punch, not only did it have the things I mentioned earlier, but it's also very easy to meaty. So on top of the fact that it's plus three for God knows why, you can use it as a very easy meaty. I mean, uh, it doesn't happen as much, but especially when I was in the lower ranks, Akuma's would do nothing but a Crouching Hard Punch on my wake up, and I'd have to fully respect it because it just has like 50 active frames. I know it doesn't actually have 50 active frames, but y y you get the idea. So I feel like making crush counters, it, they should still do high amount of damage. I always liked crush counters in that aspect, but they shouldn't be very reliable moves that you can use all the time. It should have a pretty decent risk to using them, and I feel like the best way to balance it would be to change how plus or minus it would be depending on its usefulness. Crush counters that are situational that won't hit crouching opponents or get minimal damage, they'd still be minus one at least. So, you know, you wouldn't be able to get punished for it because they are still pretty decent moves, but you can't really just throw them out there all the time. Whereas crush counters like these, which are really good, they'd be the ones that you can punish because, again, you'll just see some characters use almost nothing but these. So, yeah, that's one of the first changes I'd like to see. Again, I'm not a professional balancer. I'm, this may or may not be a good idea, but just how I always envisioned the game Crush counters should be minus. The really powerful ones should be minus. So, yeah. Uh, every character does seem to have two crush counters. One that leads to a high amount of damage and one that doesn't. So I feel like uh, the determination for how minus a crush counter should be, uh, there are multiple factors to it. Would, like how much damage he, the character can get, how reliable it is to use, and also the character's other crush counters as well. Big change! <laughs> it would pretty much entirely change the meta, because crush counters wouldn't be able to be thrown out a lot, but I feel like they should be a sort of high-risk, high-reward type deal, because you know when you land it, it's a ton of damage. But if your opponent blocks, you get punished for it, and then they could get the knockdown and stuff. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to go ex over exact numbers, but I do think strong crush counters like this one should be minus. And uh, how minus is his standing hard punch? Let's... Oh, minus five? Okay, that well, that's good. Um, minus two. Yeah, so Akuma... Uh, I do feel like maybe his standing hard punch should be a bit more plus. I mean, it does have a lot more range than Ryu's, so I guess that is another factor, also like the amount of range it has. But 
you know, it doesn't lead to as much damage, so it shouldn't be, like, super minus. And same with this one, since it's so situational, it makes sense for it to be minus two. Don't do the target combo on block. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like that'd be a good change. I've talked about this for a long time, but this is a very big change that I would have in mind. And I don't expect Capcom to do these changes, but they're just what I personally feel would improve the game experience. Okay, so my next point, I'm going to try and make this as concise as possible, because I've already recorded it twice, and it was both times they were like over 20 minutes long. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to try and make this short, but they need to work, when it comes to balancing, they need to work on the problem areas, because they're not doing that. They're just straight up ignoring a lot of the problem areas for characters. What I mean by that is, if we look back to Season 1, Ryu, Nash, and Chun-Li, they all got super nerfed. But what made them top tier in the first place? Well, um, for Ryu, the main two things that made him strong was the ridiculous amount of damage he did, uh, and his throw. He had probably one of the better throws in the game, since he could just throw loop you anytime he wanted, basically. He was super plus, and especially when you had uh, when you were in the corner, all I had to do was a crunching light punch and then immediately throw, or do a standing medium punch, which would either lead to the exact same situation again, or the exact same situation again, because after a short weekend, if you did a hit confirm, he has the perfect amount of advantage to dash up and grab. So that made him a very threatening character. All they needed to do was just nerf his throw, make it less stupid, and make his damage less insane. But instead, they decide to nerf his frame data on all of his attacks, give him more ending lag on his Tatsumakis, and just a bunch of other unnecessary nerfs that were unneeded. And with the low tiers in this game, they seem to be actively ignoring what makes them weak, and instead giving them buffs that don't really matter. What I mean by that is, you know, Alex. He's gotten quite a few buffs recently, but his biggest buff is still Advantage and Oki. He doesn't get anything off of any of his special moves. He's just kind of stuck far away, and if he finishes a combo or does a command grab, that's it. That's all he can do. He can't continue the pressure after that. If they just fix that, Alex would be a much better character. And like with Jury, her main weakness is like having to manually charge up all of her special moves. If they just fixed that, made it better, like maybe she starts the match with all three, and uh, if feeling really frisky about it, she only needs to do one charge to get all three, that would help her a lot, and it would make her a much less weak character. And the same thing with Ryu. Everybody, they always ask for a ton of Ryu buffs, but in my opinion, Ryu only needs three buffs to be a good character, because as it stands now, he's not as bad as I think everyone says he is. He just has a couple weaknesses that bring him back. His fireball needs to be faster. I mean, that 46 frames of ending lag is way too much. Um, so, yeah, that would help. Just give it, like, one frame faster to start up, like, in Street Fighter 4, 13, instead of 14. And give it a little bit less ending lag, so it can more consistently anti air. Uh, another of his main weaknesses is his advantage. Ryu is not plus two on anything that matters. He's plus two. Uh, why did I turn counter hit on? Um, <laughs> he's plus two off of his light punches. Whoop de do. And his crouching medium punch, which you know none of these really lead into that big damage. But on his standing medium punch, which is his main combo tool, he's only plus one. So against any character with a three frame move, they can just press it, and it won't even trade, it'll get hit. And if you try and do a four frame move, you'll still get hit too. It'll trade. So against every character with a three frame move, you can't pressure it with his main combo button. So you have to revert to using these, which lead into much less damage. Or spend meter because he's also plus two on his EX fireball. And you'll see Ryu's do this a lot, like, uh, I do it a lot, there are just many situations where this helps, but you shouldn't have to use meter to be plus two in a good situation, you just need better pressure. 
And lastly, uh, more consistency for his crouching medium kick. This is pretty much just make it how it was in the previous games. Because, you know, Ryu, he has a lot of trouble comboing in a fireball off this. Even at, like, kind of close ranges. If they just fix that, that would automatically make Ryu quite a bit stronger, especially if they further increase the range on it. Because, I mean, that was always one of his specialties. You'd see Ryu's do that all the time because, you know, it was such a strong technique. But in this game, it just it doesn't work. And, yeah, that's it. That's all Ryu really needs. I mean, he does a good amount of damage. And, yes, he has his weaknesses, but I feel like those are the weaknesses that make him a fun character. Not these ones. Ryu's weaknesses would be his unsafe specials. He can't just, like, do whatever he wants. But I feel like that's what makes him fun. He's a character that only really gets damage. Uh, also due to his lack of mix-ups. Due to just good reads and good reactions for things. But even then, he isn't rewarded much because he can't pressure very well. His fireballs are too slow to allow him to consistently anti-air. And he doesn't even have one consistent fireball move that also has good range. It's just these three buffs were made, we would be a much better character. And it's the same thing with Alex and Jury. If they just received a couple small buffs fixing the problem areas, they'd be much better. And it goes for the same with top tiers. If they just nerf the problem areas instead of nerfing literally everything about the character, that, that would only leave them in a much better place afterwards, but the game would be more balanced because you wouldn't have these really weak characters that used to be strong. And, like, look at Zeku. The patch notes for 3.5 are like a godsend to Zeku. He got so many amazing buffs that not only made the character better, but also made him much more unique and fun. He has a ton of options now for switching and just doing a ton of crazy awesome things. They should have buffed the other characters in a similar fashion to this. Just take what made the character bad and improve upon it. Rather than giving them kind of meaningless small damage buffs. Like one of the buffs I like is the like ability when you got is now his donkey kick moves him forward more, which makes it more consistent. Ryu's main weakness is always his consistency. His top of is on his crouching opponents. A lot of times he'll be too far away for his Shuriyuken. And, you know, his fireball doesn't give him a knockdown. And it doesn't do much damage. His donkey kick, while it still doesn't do as much damage as his other specials, it still was actually consistent. And it's even more consistent now. And it will work pretty much 90% of the time when you use it. At the cost, though, of when your opponent is in the corner, uh, you can't really do a whole lot. You'll be too far away to do many of the things that he does. Uh, you can walk forward a little bit, though. They, they did buff that with this patch, too. I forgot to mention that. But still, I mean, the main point here is that the low tiers seem to be just a few buffs away from being good characters. And instead of buffing them that way, Capcom's just giving them not very meaningful buffs that don't help them whatsoever. And I just, I feel like they need to work on that because, you know, every character they has, they has, they have their strengths and weaknesses and I feel like that's what makes it fun. But these are debilitating weaknesses that make the characters really bad. So, yeah, they need to fix that. Uh, that's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts, and I hope you agree with me on some of these things. And, yeah, uh, I'll see you guys later.